what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will start with the most awaited book of the millennium it is none other than the bhagavad gita itself and before i begin i would like to give an introduction about the gita and if you are new to my channel then subscribe to it and if you like this video then click the thumbs up and check my other videos in the channel well 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 now is the time that we begin our journey towards the divine the sun is shining brightly in the first house now it is the time of the sunrise here in germany and today the nakshatra of shravan is running moon is transiting shravan nakshatra and shravan nakshatra is very famous for activities related to lord vishnu because shravan nakshatra has its dt ruler as vishnu himself and the ruler of the nakshatra planetary wise is moon because shravana refers to the ears it refers to hearing and shravana actually is signified by lord vishnu vaman dev because it is expected that we hear about lord vishnu every day that is why there is a saying in the scriptures that nityam bhagavat sevaya means nityam means every day bhagavat means we refer to the shrimad bhagavatam sevaya means we honor the bhagavatam every day by hearing by reading it by discussing with other people by knowing about it and by seeing how it can impact us in our lives therefore today i have the bhagavad gita with me so that i can start on the shravan nakshatra now what is the bhagavad gita bhagavad gita technically is a conversation between lord krishna who is one of the incarnations of lord vishnu and arjuna who is arjuna arjuna is the son of pandu he is the brother of yudhishthir or uh, bhim nakul and sahadev now these five are known as the pandavas because they were born from maharaj pandu and the remaining the enemies the villains the bad people <laughs> they are known as the kauravas the kurus and the pandavas were only 5 in number and the kauravas were 100 in number some say they were 101 and there was one person yuyutsu who came to the side of the pandavas to fight and they also had a sister the Kauravas had a sister, and her name was Dushala, who was married to Jayadrat. Well, for the Western audience who may not have any knowledge about the Gita, I would like to give some basic introduction from the Mahabharat <coughs> and about the setting of the Gita, because that is very important. Otherwise, you will not understand why, why, why in the universe is people discussing all this in the battlefield. What had happened was. Pandu the father of the Pandavas was the king and due to some reason he had a premature death and then his sons the Pandavas were left all alone and then his brother Dhritarashtra who was the eldest among the three Vidura Pandu and Dhritarashtra started ruling the kingdom well Dhritarashtra was supposed to rule because he was the eldest but the problem was he was blind and that is why he was not allowed to be sitting in the throne because it is said that a king should be perfect or he should be well functioning by his body organs and then pandu was enthroned to the king kingdom and then he started ruling even if he was not the eldest now when pandu died dhritarashtra was put as the in charge of the kingdom and he started ruling but as per the law yudhishthir was the eldest because he was born before duryodhan who was the eldest son of dhritarashtra yudhishthir was the eldest son of pandu and yudhishthir was supposed to rule and this son of the king rules and actually originally pandu was the king dhritarashtra was just like an in charge till the time yudhishthir would mature but unfortunately dhritarashtra's son duryodhana 
he wanted to sit in the throne and then he wanted to enjoy the entire kingdom and then he tried to kill the Pandavas and then later on there was a gambling match in which he cheated the Pandavas of their wealth, prosperity, nobility and everything else including insulting their wife Draupadi and later on he had sent them to the forest for 12 years and then one year in incognito which is known as Agyatvas and then after that the Pandavas demanded that we be given the share of our kingdom but Duryodhana was so arrogant that he was not ready to listen and then this fratricidal war took place and this scene of the Bhagavad Gita goes as follows the war is about to start all the peace negotiations for stopping the war has failed and then later when the war is supposed to begin it has been declared that the war is going to start now Arjuna says to Lord Krishna that please take my chariot in between both the armies by that I will be able to know who is there on my side and who is there on the enemy side well and there the conversation begins Bhagavad Gita is consisting of nearly 700 verses 18 chapters and in the course of time we will cover all the chapters all the interpretations and all the other explanations which different people have for the different verses and I will also give my personal interpretation and my personal experiences I will be sharing of how this book has helped me in the last decade in going through the different phases and struggles of life and before we begin we will start with reciting a prayer the prayer is as follows it is an introductory prayer it's a very short prayer to the gurus who have given us the divine knowledge wisdom and empowerment because without the guru you cannot approach God that is not possible because he is the one who takes you to him <laughs> So the prayer goes like this. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnanan Janashalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Ve Namaha The meaning of this prayer is I was born in the darkest ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch of knowledge. Beautiful, isn't it? I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Om Agya Timir Andhasya. Andhasya is blindness. Jnana Anjana Shalakaya. Jnana is knowledge. Anjana is referring to the eyes. The ointment actually. And then Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha. I offer my respectful obeisances. And then we start with the first verse. Beautiful it is today, Shravan Nakshatra, and here we begin. The first chapter is named as Observing the Armies on the Battlefield of Kurukshetra because people are observing. As I said, Arjuna wants to see who is there on this side and who is there on the other side. That happens with us, right? Sometimes when we go to do something very important which is against somebody or someone whom we are connected to then we always want to say okay are you sure this is going to happen or are you sure i have to do this so arjuna now after some time is going to undergo uh, paralysis not physically it's an emotional breakdown because he is a very compassionate loving and caring person he doesn't want to fight and kill his cousins okay and in the battlefield, there were people like Bhishma Pitama, his, his grandfather, and his teacher, Dronacharya himself. And there were so many others, Bahalika, and Somadatta, Bhurishrava, all these people were his elders and he didn't want to kill them. But that's the need of the hour. Fate is very unkind to him. <laughs> 
let us begin with the first verse the first chapter is named as observing the armies on the battlefield of kurukshetra and kurukshetra is a place where the war had taken place kurukshetra the first verse goes like this so what we do is when we read the bhagavad gita we will always start with reading the verse in sanskrit and then we will go ahead with the translation and with the purport purport is the explanation well if i start dhritarashtra uvacha dharmakshetre kurukshetre samaveta yoyutsavaha mamaka pandavaschaiva kima kurvata sanjaya this is the first verse i have recited it maybe a thousand times <laughs> Dhritarashtra Uvacha, Dhritarashtra said, O Sanjaya, now who is Sanjay here? Sanjay is the charioteer of Dhritarashtra who is sitting with him in the palace in Hastinapur and Sanjaya has been empowered divinely by the great sage Ved Vyas from whom he had got a divine eyesight by which sitting in the palace itself he could see whatever is going on in Kurukshetra. And by that he could enlighten Dhritarashtra about the happenings. And that is why Dhritarashtra here is asking, O Sanjaya, after my sons and the sons of Pandu assembled in the pilgrimage, place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra, desiring to fight, what did they do? Should I repeat? Dhritarashtra said, O Sanjaya, after my sons, and the sons of Pandu assembled in the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra desiring to fight. What did they do? Now here, purport. Bhagavad Gita is the widely read theistic signs summarized in the Gita Mahatmya, glorification of the Gita. There it says that one should read Bhagavad Gita very scrutinizingly with the help of a person who is a devotee of Sri Krishna and try to understand it without personally motivated interpretations which means we should not try to interpret it as ourselves we should go to a person who is authorized to interpret it the example of clear understanding is there in the Bhagavad Gita itself in the way the teaching is understood by Arjuna who heard the Gita directly from the Lord. What a fortune it is right to hear it directly from Krishna himself. If someone is fortunate enough to understand the Bhagavad Gita in that line of disciplic succession without motivated interpretation then he surpasses all the studies of the Vedic wisdom. and all scriptures of the world one will find in the Bhagavad Gita that is combined in other scriptures but the reader will also find things which are not to be found elsewhere when he says elsewhere it means the Upanishads the Vedas and the other books of the Vedic tradition that is the specific standard of the Gita it is the perfect theistic science because it is directly spoken by the Supreme Personality of God at Lord Sri Krishna himself. <clears throat> the topics discussed by Dhritarashtra and Sanjaya as described in the Mahabharata form the basic principle for this great philosophy. See, these topics of discussion form the basis. It is understood that this philosophy evolved on the battlefield of Kurukshetra which is a sacred place of pilgrimage from the immemorable time of the Vedic age. From long time it has been there. It was spoken by the Lord when he was present personally on the planet for the guidance of the mankind. Personally Krishna spoke it. The word Dharma Kshetra a place where religious rituals are performed is significant because hear this carefully. On the battlefield of Kurukshetra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead was present on the side of Arjuna. I will repeat this statement. 
the word dharmak chetra a place where religious rituals are performed is significant because on the battlefield of kurukshetra the supreme personality of god was present on the side of arjuna which means god was there on his side that is why this is referred as dharmak chetra <coughs> dhritarashtra the father of the kurus was highly doubtful about the possibility of his son's ultimate victory can you imagine <laughs> the king is doubting will my son be victorious in his doubt he inquired from his secretary sanjaya what did they do he was confident that both his sons and the sons of his younger brother pandu were assembled in that field of kurukshetra for a determined engagement of the war means there was no doubt that they are going to fight a bloody battle still his inquiry is significant <laughs> he did not want a compromise between the cousins and the brothers and he wanted to be sure of the fate of his sons on the battlefield you see he was so much attached to his sons the kurus actually because the battle was arranged to be fought at kurukshetra which is mentioned elsewhere in the vedas as a place of worship even for the denizens of heaven dhritarashtra became very fearful about the influence of the holy place on the outcome of the battle which means he was he was having this fear inside that because this is a holy place which is revered by the celestials and the sages and the universe and the energies of the universe then maybe because of that the sons of pandu would be favored more than mine because they were on the side of righteousness and my sons were on the side of irreligiosity adharma therefore he was very fearful and he wanted to know what will be the outcome of the battle he knew very well that this would influence arjuna and the sons of pandu favorably because by nature they were all virtuous see he knew who was right who was wrong but even then he could not do what is right because he was attached sanjaya was a student of vyasadev vyasadev is the one who wrote all the vedic scriptures and therefore by the mercy of vyasadev sanjaya was able to envision the battlefield of kurukshetra even when he was in the room of dhritarashtra which i already told earlier both the pandavas and the sons of dhritarashtra belong to the same family but dhritarashtra's mind is disclosed herein look he deliberately claimed only his sons as kurus and separated the sons of pandu from the family heritage see how how terrible it is he's separating the sons of his brother from his family heritage from his lineage by saying that only kurus means only my sons which is not true one can thus understand the specific position of dhritarashtra in his relationship with his nephews the sons of pandu which means it was not very good as in the paddy field the unnecessary plans are taken out so it is expected from the very beginning of these topics that in the religious field of kurukshetra where the father of religion shri krishna was present the unwanted plans like dhritarashtra's son duryodhana and others would be wiped out and the thoroughly religious persons headed by yudhishthir would be established by the lord this is the significance of the words dharma kshetra and kurukshetra apart from their historical and vedic importance therefore the first chapter uh, the first verse of the first chapter has ended and what we understand here is that dhritarashtra the father of duryodhana and the kurus is very much concerned that maybe because this place is a very holy place it might have adverse effects on the life of my children and because they are not on the side of righteousness maybe the universe does not favor them winning 
all right so that is it from my side we will continue with the other verses next day and maybe i will need around two years to finish this because there are 700 verses and every day i plan to read one one verse and then by that share this divine knowledge so 700 means roughly two years right if i do it every day okay until next time if you have any questions queries or comments on this verse then please let me know and please like and subscribe to the channel okay and share this video with your loved ones until next time bye bye see you